Okay, Shalom Aleichem everyone. Here we are in episode number two of HaSefer. We are exploring the Jewish library. And in our first episode, we discussed a very basic yet very fundamental part of the Jewish library, and that was the Chumash, the five books of Moshe, the five books of Moses, Chamisha Chum Torah, and the various different types of books that exist in the dimension of Chumash. Today we're going to discuss the Siddur, very beautiful, important part of this season, and this is the Siddur, the prayer book. We're going to begin with the classic prayer book. Of course, this is a simple Chabad version, one which we have in our shul right here. And basically, you open it up, and all you get is a bunch of Hebrew. This comes in various shapes and sizes and colors and different prints from uh, Israel, China, the Holy Land, uh, America, and so on and so forth. But every Jewish home needs a prayer book. Every Jew needs a prayer book. And so this is a wonderful, wonderful book. Of course, this is by Kahas Publications, the uh, primary publication house of Chabad. Then we move on to our favorite. This is the Hebrew-English prayer book, the Siddur, Hebrew and English, with uh, introductions to the prayers, sources at the bottom of each, both in Hebrew and in English, as well as various um, transliterations at the back of the prayer book, which is very good. And uh, this is what uh, most Chabad houses around the world in the English-speaking world have and use. This also comes in two different sizes. It's uh, also specially bound because it has what's called a synagogue binding. So it's very, very strong and it's going to last you a very long time. It's worth every penny into buying one of these Hebrew-English prayer books. Then, of course, every prayer book comes in Hebrew and in English. But there are also those who don't speak necessarily Hebrew and English. For example, in our shul, we have many Russians, so it's also in Russian. This is also printed by the Chabad Publishing House, also by Free, another Chabad Publishing House that prints this prayer book or something similar, which is also excellent. So if you need a Hebrew-Russian prayer book, this is also excellent. So that's your classic prayer book. Now... Moving on, you go to something that's very common. Growing up also in the 80s and 90s, this was a very, very common little Siddur, a prayer book. It was published by the Mitsuda Company and the Mitsuda Siddur. And um, it's very, very user-friendly, this prayer book. You see why? It's the column on one side in English and the other one in Hebrew. It goes line by line. Not all prayer books do that. It's usually paragraph by paragraph, and that's why this is very beautiful. It also has a little commentary on the bottom. It's also pocket-sized, but it also comes in a large version the Matsuda Company also makes this in the Mahzer for all the holidays. Excellent, excellent book. If this is your custom to use the Siddur, this is also a great part of every Jewish library, the Matsuda. Um, and even if you have another prayer book, sometimes the translations are a little different and that makes things a little interesting to uh, have a secondary translation sometimes to explore different ways in which you could find meaning in the prayer. Moving on, of course... Art Scroll does it again. Again, this is also a pocket sitter, a pocket prayer book. This is uh, also for the weekdays. Art Scroll does something very interesting. They break up in a way that it could spoon feed you in a certain way. So they have for the weekdays, then they have for each holiday, then they have for the Nusach Ashkenaz, Nusach Svart, various different customs. Um, this one particularly is very special is because it goes words by words, not only paragraph by paragraph or line by line, but actually words by words. So, for example, if you open up here and it says, Umevi goel of Neivaneim, and brings a redeemer to the children of their children. And you actually have a running commentary along each line with arrows that are actually showing you how to translate it. This is the newest way of making translations, not just by paragraph, not just by line, but actually groups of words by words, which give you a more direct understanding and meaning. And that's why Art Scroll. It's very unique in this type of publication. It's an enormous amount of work to lay this out. And they did a fantastic, fantastic job. And many people that are coming to prayers for the first time, and even others that want to see the meaning as they're going along reading the Hebrew, it's very easy, plausible to the eye, and as Art Scroll always does a fantastic job with their layouts. So this is also an excellent, excellent book. Now, you'll notice this one says, Siddur Simchas Yeshua. There are various names and versions don't get carried away by that. What you're looking for is simply the Siddur or Limosachol, either for the days of the week or for the weekdays or for Shabbos or for the holidays. Uh, sometimes the additional Hebrew language on top or verbiage 
is not uh, necessarily reflective of the actual content of the Siddur. So this is called the Schottenstein edition Siddur for the weekdays with an interlinear translation. Uh, and this happens to be uh, a certain individual uh, Nusach. And there are various Nusach. Nusach means different liturgies, different customs from different cities and countries where they had different uh, verbiage in the Siddur. Even though the majority of it is the same, there are parts of it which are different. Now, moving on from there, we go on to the Sephardic Siddur. Shari Tzion is very, very common in the last few decades. Before that, there was another Siddur. I don't have it here, but it's called Tfilat David Shlomo. That was the classic, most common Siddur used for Eidata Mizrach. These were the Sephardic Jews and uh, Jews that came from the Middle East. And they followed that Nusach of uh, Tfilat David Shlomo. And then it became Shari Tzion. And then you have others where they call the name of the book after someone they love or after someone they're sponsoring the book in honor of. But if you open up to the inside, you actually see it says, Nusach Lefi Minag Hasfardim, according to the Sephardic Jews and according to the Eid at Mizrach, the Middle Eastern Jews. And uh, this was most common and most used. Of course, there are many other versions. Uh, many of the synagogues that are Sephardic in our community use this. And then if you go on to uh, the Sephardic custom, of the Bukharian Jews, you have Siddur Shlomo ben David, as well as various other ones, quite a few other ones. Um, and this is very good because also it has the Hebrew, very well done, and it also has the Russian translation and sometimes commentaries on the bottom. So if you're outside of the uh, Anglo-Saxon English speaking and uh, you're outside of the American or Ashkenazi uh, uh, lineage, you're going to go to the Eida Tamizrach. And then if you're from the Bukharian, you'll go to this book. And that's why it seems just already, I'm not even halfway through the pile, and you already have so many books. Now you understand why. Moving on, you have here a very nice larger version. Again, this is what they call the, another edition, another company, Sichon Zichron Avram. Like we mentioned before over there, Sidr Simcha Yeshua. This is called Zichron Avram. Sabbath and festivals, it has the OU logo on it also, but it's published by Art Scroll and Missouri Publications, another version. So it's just a playoff on some of the other versions that Art Scroll has, as we mentioned. Art Scroll also did us a wonderful favor, a wonderful favor, and they actually also made a Hebrew Russian translation, which is also beautiful because you have the advantages of the beautiful Art Scroll print, as well as the translation, as well as the running commentary in the bottom. And so this too, it's also a wonderful, wonderful version for those of you who want to find a Russian translation of the publication. Moving on, you have some other Hebrew Siddurs, which is like Siddur Kol Yaakov Asholom. This is very common in a lot of the uh, local Ashkenazic shuls. You have this, uh, this is Nusach Ashkenaz, um, and in it, it has also the, the weekday prayers, the Shabbos prayers, and as well as some of the other prayers for some of the other holidays, very common. And if this is your prayer book, then you'll be familiar with that as well. Moving on, <clears throat> there are many other sidurim, many other prayer books beyond the scope of practice. This is just some that we carry in our library, in our synagogue, so that when people come here, although the nusach is nusach arizal, for example, other people pray other nuschaot, other uh, versions of the liturgy, and we want to make people feel comfortable and welcome. And so to you could have at home what you pray and maybe also other nuschaot, so other people that come to your home to pray could feel comfortable as well. And then you go into a little bit of the commentary of the prayer book. And for this, you should really look into some of the great commentary books. In fact, this week our library received hundreds of commentaries in Hebrew, which maybe one day we'll go into on the prayer book. At least 200 different books, just commentaries on the Siddur, on the prayer book. You think the Talmud has commentaries? You should see the commentaries on the Siddur. But one of my favorites of the commentaries on the prayer book is called My Prayer. And this is by one of the greatest writers of the 20th and even 21st century, Rav Nissen Mendel. He, of course, is one of the secretaries of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, a two-volume set. It goes through every prayer in the prayer book, and it gives you a little bit of an information, a little bit of an insight into the prayer book. It's also a very beautiful gift package. If you look at it, it's very, very nicely done. It's been recently re reset, retypeset. This is also by Kahas, by the publication house uh, from Chabad. And it's really, really beautiful. My prayer, something to look into for commentaries on the prayer book. 
Also, the Masora Publication House made something called Pathway to Prayer, also an excellent book. There's also a little booklet that we have here at the library. This is user-friendly for students that are maybe in the yeshiva or learning about prayer and they want some riddles or connections to the Torah portion. This is called the Torah of Tefillah, which is basically where we find the concept of prayer in the Torah portion. A really cute book, really well done by Moshe Juravel. And uh, I believe there's multiple volumes of this book. This is just on the Parsha of Bereshis, the first volume of the Torah, in connection to prayer. And so there are many books like this. This is just a few I pulled off the shelf that are commentaries on the prayers, books that help us understand prayer, books that connect the Torah and prayers, and it's very exciting. And of course, also the Art Scroll, once again, does a wonderful job on the prayer book, also in soft cover, as well as many other soft cover versions of different sections of the prayers throughout the year, which have running commentaries. So look into that as well. Hang on tight. I want to show you one more thing before we go. So here we are, of course, besides the prayer book, of course, besides the prayer book, is the Mahzah, which we're all doing now, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. This is the Chazan's Mahzah, the Rosh Hashanah. And the same thing, just like there is with Sidurim, that we learn and read from all year. Similarly, the prayer book for the high holidays, as well as for some of the other holidays, the Mahzah for Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, Purim, uh, Pesach, and Shavuos. You have various different Mahzorim. There's also the book of liturgy for the prayers of the holidays. So this is just one example. This is the Chazan's version. It's the big one. And um, also all of those publication houses, Mitsuda, Artscroll, Kahas, they all make beautiful, beautiful books that every Jewish home should have. I want to conclude, as we do in each session, as we will, with something interesting. Now, you see this? This is a book that I had bound last year. This is from 1743. And uh, it's actually missing the title page, and we're trying to find exactly who published this book, and we believe it's from Prague, and uh, it's from the 1740s. I pray with this book on the high holidays because it has some amazing, amazing Kabbalistic and esoteric running commentary throughout the prayers of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Extremely, extremely meaningful. It brings amazing anecdotes and stories, and... Um, it's just inspiring. You go back in history to the 1700s to think where this prayer book came from, whose table this prayer book could have been on, who published the prayer book, how many days, weeks, and months, years it went into publishing this book, what it costed to put this book together in the 1700s. And then eventually our wonderful friend in Brooklyn, the bookbinder, who made this so beautiful for us to enjoy today. My holy brothers and sisters, that's it on the prayer book for today. If you don't have it, you can't use them. Build yourself a Jewish library, acquire the books, share it with others, own them, share them, and God should help that you should be inspired by the books that you own until the coming of Mashiach.